Welcome back to RSAC 2024. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. Shelly Kramer is here, as, all, as is David Linticum. We got a really interesting story to share with you. Uh, it's a company called Know Before. You may have heard of them. Stu Showerman is here, he's the CEO. And Tony Pepper is the CEO of Egress, a company that Know Before just recently acquired. Uh, know Before in late 2022 was announced Vista, uh, they exited the Vista about 4.6 billion. I think it was closed in early 2023. And the premise behind it is the vast majority, let's call it 80% of breaches, are based on human error. And so, rather than just throwing technology at the problem, Know Before has a really interesting story here. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much Good for see coming you, on. So, what's the founding premise? You started to tell a story. Yeah. Share that with us, yeah. it's fascinating. I was, uh, just before me was the CTO of CrowdStrike, and I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, we, we kind of did that uh, similar. I'm an InfoSec guy. Um, we built an, an AV engine from scratch, and we had a couple of million endpoints out there, and a whole floor full of tech support people, and constant trouble tickets with infected workstations. So. I was going, what on earth is happening? So we did the ask why five times, you know, the lean Six Sigma <laughs> approach. <laughs> and ultimately the root cause of all those penetrations was social engineering. Is the end user letting a bad actor in, clicking on a link, opening up an infected attachment? And so then I looked, well, who is doing something about that? And practically no one a few small players, like way up in the global 2000, and I said, okay, this is a problem that nobody really has been managing. Um, I don't call it a solution. And because if you stop doing this, the problem comes back. So this is a great way to manage the ongoing problem of social engineering. Yeah, this being the way you take uh, what I call security awareness, yeah. um, and you, you bring in you know, training, uh, of compliance, uh, testing, you do fake phishing yep. uh, to, to try to fake people out. I know, mm -hmm. I know Lena Smart from Mongo does some of this stuff. I don't know if you know Lena, she's the CISO of, of, of Mongo. She says to me, that's easy, just don't ever click on a link. I yeah. go, well, wait a minute, what if I send you? She goes, well, if I know you, but I still think about it. And then the other thing that she shares is she takes so you're an InfoSec guy. Yeah. She takes deep InfoSec people and pairs them up with business people that don't have a clue on cyber and say, talk to each other. Right. And so through that process, they both sides get educated. The, the hardcore InfoSec guys can communicate better instead of in mumbo jumbo acronyms. Yes. And then they can also see how uneducated the average business person right. is. And, you know, then good things happen, but you have an extremely novel way of humanizing security, and you've just made an awesome business out of it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and it's only the beginning, because we now have this platform with almost 70,000 customers and 60,000 users, but we did find that um, advanced threat actors make it through the old security email gateways that make it through the filters, and you need an, an ICES, and this is where Tony comes in, that lives and catches those very super sophisticated phishing attacks, so you can provide a whole platform, and decrease your vendors. This is a, a recurring theme, and I'm sure that Tony can tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, tell us about Egress, you know, kind of what the company's founding premise was all about, and what the fit is with Before. Well, I mean, the fit's perfect, right, Dave? I mean, every, every customer we spoke to, every analyst we spoke to, they say the same story. It's, it's not often you see M&A where it's the perfect fit, right? Where you're looking at one of the largest, if not the largest training company in the world that helps educate, assess, really help build that security culture within an organization. But then, when you couple that with a business that is obsessed about ultimately detecting behavioral based threats, and that could be inbound or outbound. And email is still one of those challenges where actually fundamentally that's what the threat actors are using. There are other channels, but ultimately email's really the number one threat that is a real concern, but the threat landscape's changed. And now what we see in the world, and you talked about it a second ago, David, the world is struggling with behavioral based threats. The old days of kind of payload based attacks, they're kind of gone. 
It's all using highly sophisticated models. Crime as a service is now an industry which you can fire up incredibly sophisticated attacks at low cost and serve them up to the world. So I think we need to move on to a, to a new approach. So when you think about combining a platform that, that, that uses AI to look for behavioral based attacks or threats, and when you combine that with a business that's been training more employees in business than anyone in the world and understands how you resonate, how you can connect with an employee business and serve up relevant content, you can build something different that can then personalize that training and couple it with real time threats. So why would I train you, Dave, on something that isn't a threat that you normally see? Why don't we train you on something you received today or yesterday or the week before? I think we've got a personalized content, we've got a personalized training based on real life threat telemetry, but you can't do that if you don't see those attacks, right? So it really is a combination that Stu and I are phenomenally excited about. It's so true what you're saying, uh, Tony. I mean, any, I've said many times, any knucklehead today can be a ransomwareist. Right. I can go on the dark web, ransomware as a service, and if, I'm, if I want to commit a crime, it's not that hard to do. I can get very sophisticated access to very sophisticated techniques, tools, and technology. For 50 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah for, <laughs> it's so true, this is scary. So, okay, so email, obviously, big problem. Now they're going after our text, right? So that's the other, uh, same, humanizing security, whether it's text, like you said, other channels, mm -hmm. is that sort of a, a, a TAM expansion for you? Yeah, or? of course yeah. it is. I mean, this is just the beginning, right? So, the advantage of email is if you understand an organization's email and communication patterns, you really have a deep understanding of who you normally communicate to, who's relevant in your universe, but it is, it's a key channel, but it's one of many channels. So for us, it's about building out a platform with AI at its core that you can then detect threats, you can mitigate risk, and then you can ultimately join up the dots and actually bring people along with that journey through that security culture that Stu's been so passionate about, and that's the thing that connects us. It's about not demonizing employees in business, it's about taking them on a journey so they're part of that security ecosystem. Yeah, you want to build a strong security culture, and, um, that only uh, gets accomplished by almost real time or near time. This is happening, you get relevant training and, and you help these people understand what truly is risky behavior, which also helps them stay safe at the house. Very often, after they go through a module, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is how do I share this with my family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I want a family culture that's security aware. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we we have modules for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I actually, I would love to do like a, a fishing exercise with the family. I, I, I'm a, I'd be embarrassed and afraid to take it, but I do kind of <laughs> do want to take it because I'm sure you can fake me out. Right? We, and could, we could. <laughs> it's, you know, how sophisticated do you go? Yeah. The trick is, is to slowly build it up. That is the individualized approach. You start with a one star and you migrate up to two, three, four, five star level difficulty fishing tests. I have, you know, my face is out there. I do a lot of content and I have some quote unquote fans and sometimes I'll get emails from them saying how much they lo love the program and they like my weekly analysis and they'll put a link in. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. No. Well, I'm not touching that, I don't know this no, person. No, also, oh. you can be deep faked. Uh, Big like, time, right? Like in two minutes. How about, speaking of deep fakes, obviously we should be very concerned about it, more yes. concerned than ever. And then, we had John Chambers on here last year, he was saying he has a startup that's doing, you know, uh, uh, detecting voice fake, yes. which I think is, is pretty good. What are your thoughts on, on, on that and the, the, uh, the state of, of fakes? these days and how to combat them? Obviously the same thing is true of any new technology. You can use it for good or for bad. Um, you can use AI to detect deep fakes, um, but it's the old game of chess. Bad actors move first and then you have to counter. Um, it just brings up the whole uh, battle on a whole new level. It's AI against AI ultimately. And so, uh, are you able to, you, I presume you're able to compress that, that move, speed chess. You play speed chess, yes? Yes, uh, <laughs> we do. 
With 16 boards. <laughs> At once, <Right>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you, was, you had said you're just getting started kind of when we, we talked earlier. Yeah, so. I like to just, you know, this is more of a fun observation, but walk around in any city in the United States. Uh -huh. Over here, wherever, one in 10 people gets trained by no before. Really? It's nationwide. There's still nine to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you got to look at that day from a data perspective, right? If you've got that level of data in the world, that, and you can use that data to train a model to then understand how you detect and prevent some of those advanced attacks. So they often say about AI, it's like garbage in, garbage out, right? It's the classic adage. But to be able to deliver something at scale that's truly something different, you need scale data. And that's what's super interesting about ultimately you know before customers. If you can take that data, that, that, that information you have on how people, how they react to phishing campaigns, how they report. Ultimately, the No Before Pad button is the most downloadable Outlook plugin in the Microsoft Store. So when you've got that data and you can plug that, that into a true. whole series of models, and then you can use that to flip it on its head to then build better detection, which of course then is self-trained, then you've got something really different, right? Yeah, because the, the, the attacker's technique is not your customer's IP. Your customer doesn't care if you're sharing that technique to make you know, their competitors even more safe. No, that's all metadata. Right, um, mm -hmm. right. And we do see uh, huge amounts of attacks coming in. Um, that little button that um, was just mentioned is indeed the number one installed button in Outlook globally. Most people don't know that either. Um, but Tony was right. Uh, tens of millions of people report those attacks we see all that, and we have a you know a global block list that just filters out that stuff fr from the get-go. But you know, there's always delays. That's why you need the kind of AI, the adaptive uh, systems that live in the ICES. This is a new term I only recently learned. The Internet. What integrated cloud email security. Integrated yes, email cloud protocol, email right? security, yeah. but specifically for the 365s of this world. Does it, who? Integrated cloud email security. And yep. that's, a, that's an open standard? Yeah, it's a Gartner, Gartner ultimately came up with that in the market guide prior to the Magic Quadrant that's actually imminently due to be announced. Bringing back the email security quadrant, which was retired in 2017. Really? And I think that tells you a story, <laughs> right? So back in 2017, ultimately Gartner retired the secure email gateway quadrant because it felt it was a little bit old hat, had the same old players. Um, those same players existed for several years after, but it was deemed so mature and not interesting that it was actually retired. Yeah. Several years ago, they brought back the, the market guide because lots of new players were starting to come into the market taking a different approach. Imminently, you'll now see a new Gartner market guide for email security, which tells you itself, it's back with a vengeance now. Because customers are asking, we've got real challenges, we've got stuff getting through the seg, getting through Microsoft, landing in people's inboxes, they're super complex and they're costing billions of dollars. How do we figure this behavioral-based problem out, right? So it's, it's all, email security's uh, had a, like a reinsurgence, I guess, really, and, and actually this combination fully, fully intends to, to capitalize on that. Elon was um, speaking or being interviewed at uh, the Milken uh, Institute conference that's going on, mm -hmm. and he said something to the effect, I forget the time frame, let's assume, within five years, let's say, easily, you probably know when Elon, he said next week, but within five years, uh, only 1% of intelligence will be biological, human <laughs> intelligence, 99% is going to be machine intelligence. So I was like, okay. So, as you guys, you help humans get more cyber aware, AI could come up with new creative attacks. Are we, are we seeing that? We must be seeing that already. Oh yeah. And it's just asymptotic, actually exponential. Exponential. Yeah, right. yeah. So. yeah. it is. Um, the, the, but the interesting thing is that you can use that same AI to, uh, to train the people to recognize those. The funny thing is we're coming out with a module, this uh, actually this quarter, 
where the, the program administrator can say, I want to create a phishing email with this topic and the tone needs to be um, aggressive and it needs to have a picture. Um, and two or three more, you know, kind of pull downs and we are generating a custom made phishing template that they can then send out to their users simply to get those users aware of, oh, this is state of the art, okay. When you started the company, you you could have taken a different direction as, a, as an InfoSec person, technologist. You could have said, I'm going to invent some new technology, plug a hole, sell my company. Um, what, uh, I'm really curious, this is such a novel thing. I mean, at the time, what was out there at the time? Was it like consulting companies doing this type of training? And, and then you sort of created Rarely. this platform? Or was in, nobody in, doing in, it? In, in, <clears throat> in 2010, yeah. Um, uh, my f startup number four got acquired by Insight Partners. I looked around for a week and I said, nobody is addressing this problem. There were two small companies at that point. One was called Wombat, the other one yeah. was called FishMe. Um, Wombat sold itself to Proofpoint. FishMe renamed itself to Cofence and is still out there. Um, but what, what I decided was if you really ask why five times and you have a correct root cause analysis, this human risk management had never really been addressed. Mm. And so we're, we're still in the early stages because there's many millions of organizations out there that need to do this. And so us teaming up makes it much easier to pull that trigger. Had you guys partnered before the yeah, acquisition? Yeah, we had integrated so was, already yeah. for So that made year. it really easy so to get to market. So it's a really quickly. great integration. Two way, we see their data, they see our data. It's, well, we like to say it's better together, and it's really true. And it's just a line extension to the no before platform? Or it's, or? yeah, we yeah. fit, it, it's another, call it another product. Um, but it, it's, I really like to call it a platform mm -hmm. yeah. because it all is truly integrated together. Guys, congratulations uh, on such an exciting, creating a, such an exciting business and, 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 and getting to the next stage. Uh, I wish the best. Last word, what's happening at RSA for you guys? What's the conversation like? The buzz everyone, is here. Everyone is super excited about the, the merge. Yeah. Everybody loves it. Yeah, fantastic. Give you the last word. Same, Ev every customer, every partner, they just want to know when they can get their hands on it, when we can start yes. uh, getting through our regulatory approvals, which we need to get through, but yeah, it's uh, the, the, year, the remainder of the year is going to so be a real blast. So when do you expect the deal to close? I mean, is it, this should be a quick this close, year. you know? Yeah, I mean. For sure. Yeah. This year. Lena Khan's not coming after you, come <laughs> on, that's not. No, <laughs> it's, you know, a regulatory, yeah. it's UK, it's other countries. Yeah, right. yeah, competition committee has to make sure it's yeah. all good. Yeah. But uh, we, we expect this to go right. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. all good for yes. the community and, the, and, and the, the world. So thank you guys, really appreciate you your that. time. Thanks so really much. Really a pleasure. Okay. All right, okay, keep it right there. We're back, RSA Conference 2024. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>